My name is Jason Luthi. I work with Longleaf Wilderness Medicine, and we provide wilderness first aid and wilderness first responder uh, certification classes throughout the country. Uh, I'm here to show you what is in a standard uh, wilderness medicine first aid kit, and something that if you're looking for options for building a kit, what you could put in that kit. So what I've got here is just a general version of a wilderness first aid kit. Um, something that's multi-use, something that you could use for a lot of different applications. Um, and so as far as the way my brain works with kits, I, I end up compartmentalizing things into a couple different, different areas. And so for the kit that I have here, I've got a section that's medications, I've got a section that's tools, I've got a section that's trauma, and then I've got a section about skin care. And when I think about those different things, trauma is the one that probably comes into my brain first. Uh, because trauma is the thing that if there's an emergency, you want to be prepared and you want to be there straight away for it. So the, the pieces in this kit, or the section of the kit, are probably most importantly having a pair or two pairs of nitrile gloves. So you can touch a person without concern of disease transmission or keeping yourself a little bit more clean. And then I've got a trauma shears for access. And it's much better to use a trauma shears for cutting a piece of clothing off of a person than using your, your knife. And then the other pieces of equipment in here are things for bleeding control. And so I've actually got a, a dressing that's designed to help a person clot their bleeding. And then big absorption pads and a roller gauze to help address those things or put those on the person's body. And so that ends up being in my trauma kit. As far as meds go, I've got a few different meds that I carry with traditionally, and one of them is going to be uh, a version of Benadryl or an antihistamine for severe allergic reactions. And then I've got a few other ones. I've got ibuprofen or a, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, a non-aspirin uh, pain reliever. I've got aspirin for the case of needing it for a heart attack. And then I've got some meds that are going to help a person just be a little bit more comfortable. So I've got meds for making a person go to the bathroom easier or harder for them to go to the bathroom or decongestant things. So those are just kind of comfort tools. There's a few alcohol prep pads for cleaning a person up or working with them. And then the other things that I've got in there is a product called Tincture of Benzoin, which is for helping material stick to a person a little bit better, uh, band-aids or mole skin and mole foam. And then the other one is instant glucose for a person having a, a sugar emergency or a person that's having not enough sugar in their system. Next kit is going to be the tools kit. It's the kit of all the different things that you might need to help do your first aid. Um, and the tools that I have in here are going to be a, a sharpie for writing. I've got a pencil and a little bit of duct tape. An irrigation syringe for helping clean. Uh, clean wounds specifically. And then a nail clipper, mostly for preventative first aid and keeping a person's toenails and fingernails trimmed. And then safety pins for a, a variety of reasons. And then the last kit that I've got here is going to be for skin and skin care. And there's not a lot in here that's, that's too strange. I've got gauze pads of a bunch of different sizes. I've got band-aids for somebody, and then blister products, so mole skin and mole foam. I've got a, a gauze roll for applying bandages, and then a transparent dressing and a steri strip for being able to close wounds and then cover wounds for people in a breathable way. The only other thing that I've got in this kit right now is tape for application of any of these things. Uh, a stretchy self-adherent dressing and then a way to document what you're doing with your patient. If you were you know, trying to make it smaller and just going out for, for a short time during a day, what are the things that you would be the easiest to take out? The big thing that I would do is focus most on what do I think is going to happen or what's this biggest potential of something happening. So if I'm looking for a small first aid kit to run with, 
I would spend more time with bleeding, like blisters and wounds and wound care. So I would stay with maybe a, a couple pieces of transparent film and one of the, the run best friends of super glue, a way to help blister prevention and also take care of a whole bunch of little skin maladies. And then are there a couple things that wouldn't be in here but, but are very important for specific things? Yeah. I. Again, depending on the type of accident that I think might happen, I can focus more on one thing or the other. And so one example would be having this clotting agent in a first aid kit is something that I would suggest to people that are doing hunting ac or hunting related things as well as the potential of a hunting accident. Uh, the other thing that can go along with this is a, a tourniquet, which is something that is now pretty heavily used in civilian medicine so that people are able to stop bleeding control. And that's another place if you're doing any timbering or you're working with uh, chainsaws or any work for logging, that's a really important piece of equipment. You, you got all this gear, that's great, but you got to know what you're doing with it. What, what kind of training, you know, from, from the, the most basic to the most intense, what, what kind of training do you recommend for people? I think at a very minimum, if somebody could take a first aid and CPR class, so they're able to address airway breathing and circulation emergencies for people, that's a great starter, and you could use a lot of the pieces of equipment in a kit like this with that training. If you're interested in preparing for emergencies that are in more remote places, uh, whether that's because you work in a remote place or that you travel in remote places, looking into wilderness medicine trainings like wilderness first aid, which is a two day course, or if you are really interested in it or taking people into the backcountry, a wilderness first responder, which is a nine day, 76 hour training.